My name's Laurie Linder. I started with, I was born in Eagle Point. Uh, my husband was born in Eagle Point also. And I ran for council first in 1984. And I was always interested and I went to council meetings and stuff and pretty had, had a pretty good idea of what was going on for a while. And I became kind of disgruntled with a couple of things. So I uh, decided to run for the council first. This town was just important. I mean, I had a lot of friends that I didn't, I lived out of town. I was born here, but I lived out on Agate Road, still an Eagle Point address. Uh, for a long time before George and I were married in 1971 and we bought this house in 1973 but my mom and dad lived across the street George, George's brother lived across the street from my mom and dad uh, and it wasn't a very big town you couldn't go out to eat without seeing that was that's I miss that the the Everybody was your friend. Everybody knew if you were in trouble or had a, a problem, and it wasn't through Facebook or, or the computer. It was people knowing people. Uh, the fact that, that my brother and his family were killed and they weren't found for six months, that that was a really difficult time, and the people stood behind us so much. So I ran for council and I tied. And the charter at that time said that a tie was broke by a drawing of lots. And so we had a former mayor who always came to the council meetings and I, he always handed out dum dum suckers to the council when he, when he came in, and uh, I wasn't on the council yet, but I was at the meetings, and and uh, so when it came up that we had tied, and how were they going to break the tie? Somebody suggested well, we put two dum dums in a box and hold the box up, and whoever. Uh, we put a red one and a green one, and whoever gets the green one breaks the tie. So it was a big joke that I was the dum-dum that got the dum-dum. <laughs> and that's how, I, uh, that's how I originally got on the council. Mm -hmm. And I served two years on the council before I ran for mayor in 1986. And uh, it was in 1986 that we passed the uh, tax base, 86 or 87. I think it was 86 because my uh, grandson was born in Eureka and I was down there calling up here on election to see if we had, had passed it. So those were a couple of interesting things that were... Uh, and So Stephanie was elected mayor. Stephanie had been elected mayor, and I, I've got newspaper clippings that would tell me, but I mean, I'm old, <laughs> uh, that I can't remember exactly when she resigned as mayor, and it was kind of a of a hassle, too, when, and so we appointed Rose Draper as she wasn't on the council or anything. She was just a citizen that, uh, and she had been on the council before to serve as mayor till the end of, of Stephanie's term. And then I ran for mayor at the end of Stephanie's term. And Was it a close election? 
Uh, no. N not really at all. Uh, I'm trying to think who I ran against. Good Lord. Because you were the third woman in a row. Right. Actually, the fourth with Rose being appointed. Uh, so, uh, anyway, that's when I started as mayor with a lot of big ideas. I got the Christmas decorations done, which doesn't mean anything now, but it, it was all done with no taxpayer dollars. And, uh, it brought a lot of people, a, a lot of pride to a lot of people that that helped put them up every year. And now they have a, the city has a bucket truck and and puts them up. And I think that the the main street and what they've done with the lights and the, I just think that's incredible. I, I give them so much credit for the vision to do it when they had the money to to do it. Well I felt like we needed a tax base that the city would live within because every year they had to go to the voters for the budget to pass the budget to and I felt that the reason that it hadn't been done is because people felt like there was waste, whether there was or not, they felt like there was waste and these were people that had lived here a long time and a lot of them were upset when they removed the tax base. And it was really hard for the people, the police department, the everybody to uh, plan when they didn't know whether it was going to, and didn't know July 1st whether you were even going to have a police department or any. So that was one of my goals was to, to pass a tax base that was reasonable and have enough, I guess, integrity to say, I think we can live within this and, and it shouldn't be raised, and it has never been raised since. the The value, uh, the valuation, and the growth has supported the tax base. And so, I I walked. Well, we split it up with the council and myself, visiting every every house, every you know, explaining what we were working for and and why I have to say it was mostly me <laughs> at the time because it was hard for other people to get out and uh, Bill Kurtz was he visited a lot of people anyway in 1986 we passed a new tax base and that was something that was important to me and I think I think the way, I think we did it about right because the growth has supported it. Right now, the fire district costs more per thousand than it was costing for the city with their own fire department. I, I mean, I realize times have changed and, and all that, but I, I think the city has kind of kept pace with the growth and been able to live within that tax base and, and they've taken there's a percentage that they that they can take every year. But they haven't had to pass another one, let's put it that way. And I think that's a good thing. And I can't remember exactly they they assessed every house in Eagle Point. I can't remember how much money to hook into this regional sewer, but they never did hook into the regional sewer. As a matter of fact, later, yeah, we won't talk about that, but anyway, I felt that that money should go back to the people that paid in until they did have something to hook up. 
And I was probably really ignorant and, and naive, but it just didn't seem right to me that they took, and there were a lot of people that felt that they put it, I think they put it on her water bill, that they put, took the money, but they never hooked up, and uh, I wanted them to refund the money, to the, and they did eventually. Uh, that was what, that was probably one of the biggest things that I was disgruntled about. The rest, I really felt like, you know, if people pitched in and uh, did things themselves, the tax rate wouldn't have to go up. That, that we'd never had, we'd have one Christmas decoration over the top of the, uh, right in front of the old city hall. And uh, I wanted to see us decorate for Christmas. And uh, Shirley Oswald, I went to the community association then and asked for support. And Shirley Oswald at the flower shop started making swags to hang on the, on the post. And I made stockings big stockings. I mean, they were pretty chintzy, but we were decorating anyway, and there was a lot of community involvement. And I had worked for, been a dispatcher for United Telephone before that, and had a pretty good rapport with the repairmen and stuff. But, and I talked them into hanging them with their ladder truck and stuff. And Jackson Electric, uh, Sally Jackson was my very best friend, and they were willing to help and put their ladders up and hang things and, and stuff. And somebody contacted me from the Bear Creek Shopping Center that uh, they knew that I was involved or whatever. Anyway, they contacted me and they were going to change their decorations and put up different decorations and wanted to know if we wanted them. They were, and I went down there and hauled every one of them home and they were, the big plastic bells they still use uh, down around in Bob Moore Park. The uh, there was about 5,000 feet of, of garland, plastic garland, that was dirty and old and neat, and all the bells needed. And I washed the garland in my bathtub and drug it through the house, to, and they used to hang, hang it on the front of the stores down in Great Way Shopping Center. Moving the bridge had been brought to the council. My, my dates are going to be pretty shady because it was old. it had been brought to the council before I even ran for council. There was a group that, that wanted to move the bridge because uh, at that time the bus barn was on this side of the creek. The school but there was only one bridge across the creek the school buses had to cross that bridge at the same time kids walking to school were crossing that bridge it wasn't safe it was uh, and somebody not me had the idea of heck there was an opportunity to move that bridge and make it a pedestrian bridge and still save it and uh, that maybe we could get enough grants and, and raise enough money uh, to do the job. And we, uh, well, no, see, I lost it. It was, it had been brought up and the council turned it down and said, no, the city didn't want to be involved in it or anything. And so after I was mayor, it was brought up again. It was brought, and I was on the bridge committee, and we we formed a bridge committee, and Bud Bowling was on it, and uh, Sue Capellas was on it, Ralph Weiniger was on it, I was on it, and I, 
it was brought before the council. And I'm a little bit shady on that because the city really at that point didn't have any money involved in, the, in it or anything. And like 4th of July celebration, every, everything there was, I was down the street with a coffee can collecting donations or, or whatever. We did uh, hit Harry and David, uh, First Interstate. All of us kind of hit uh, Bud Bowling. I knew no hit a machinery company out on the highway, and they donated uh, big. And but we didn't really have enough money to do all of it. Ralph Weiniger ended up taking out a loan to finance to to start, and. It's hard for me to remember all the details of that, but it was pretty much done. And then they were they were out of money, and Richard Box because they were having Richard Box. There was something at the time that the city could act as its own contractor and not have to pay prevailing wage to and and Bud Bowling agreed to it. And I think Reed Murphy pretty much donated everything that, that he did. Um, and that's how we stretched the money to, to go uh, further. And so the city at that point was involved. And some of the things I did as mayor, I wrote a thank you note to every donation that came in from uh, on my own money, <laughs> you know, uh, to if, every donation, I, if we had an address and it was a check, I, I wrote them a thank you. And I kept City Hall hours on Tuesdays. Uh, when, and, and that was a really neat thing because I got to really know the employees, the we got to be really good friends, you know, because I was down there. I painted the, help the city, uh, she wasn't the recorder then. Carmen Bernhardt's daughter was a pretty good artist, and we went down there one night and painted a Christmas scene on the front window of the old city hall. And I had to stand on the desks and wash it off when it was a, when Christmas was over. But uh, th there was always a birthday. I baked a cake for uh, every city employee's birthday, or if it was a council, I baked cookies. I mean, things were just different then. It, it was special. Uh, the friendships uh, that I made. Uh, it was it was special. You you also talked about the golf course. It was just in the planning stage, which basically, I think George was on the council when he filled in for I think it was Ralph Barker. More when that was going on because. Any decision the city made was a quasi-judicial decision, and we, could, we couldn't be involved in the planning commission process, or shouldn't have been, and shouldn't have been discussing anything other than what the developer was bringing before us. So I didn't have a lot of... Uh, input or anything into that. I think after I was mayor is when most of that came before the council. I felt I supported it a hundred percent. Why? I, Why did you support it? Because I could see growth happening that we weren't ready for as far as house building and the sewer system and the water system and that that we weren't ready for. And there's a beautiful orchard up there that if we're going to develop 
something that will feed the tax base and add value to the city, I'd rather see that property used for something that was going to bring people in, that was going to do good for the city, than put a bunch of houses up there, you know, that that I didn't feel we were ready, for, that we, I didn't feel we had the infrastructure for, I didn't feel, uh, so I supported it basically philosophically very much. I didn't have a lot to do with any of the decision making right. uh, about it, but I supported it then and I think it was a good choice. I, I Was it generally the sentiment in the town as well? At that time there wasn't a lot of sentiment brought up about it because it really wasn't coming before the council. A lot of the plan, the things that were coming before the planning commission were not all that well known, you know, yeah. at, at the time. So I, I think that, I can't imagine that most people didn't support it though because we, that was back in the day where we left the town the way it was. Yeah. We, you know, if you'd have told me that that all the building that's gone on and going on now was going to happen, I'd have said, no way, you know, I mean, and the infrastructure that's been added, the, the sewer lines and the water, uh, we're now in the sewer district rather than having it go into a lagoon down and off the highway. You know, I mean, we just weren't ready. <coughs> and I think that made the city ready to grow. Now that could be something that I'm not... No, I think it's grown pretty orderly. I think there's things that need attention. Basically, I'm kind of a... The impression we give people when they come in is really important. And when they come in by uh, Ed Day Hacks and down there on that end of town where there's trailers and stuff set in there that are illegal and messes, and that's not in the city. Right. And I think, I really strongly think the county should have taken a stand on that a long time ago. And I know Ed Day Hack, I, I've known him for years, but. And he's done a lot for for the city. He did a lot for the bridge, and and but I hope he's a hundred years old. I hope that the city will annex that in. I can understand why it's kind of a hard hard thing. He's a he's a hundred years old. He's a, a was a great supporter of the town and and. The, but it would have been easy for, easier if the county would have came in and settled that whole thing out there. But the county has not had the best record at, at a lot of that out on Big and Brown Road and, and stuff that went on for a long time. I was in favor of White City being incorporated. And I still feel like it, that rather than get the services the way they've got them without the tax base and stuff, I, I still feel like it should be incorporated. Uh, but that's my personal opinion and has nothing to do with being mayor. It was awful. It was, it, it was terrible. So many people from Eagle Point have been killed and hurt. My mom was killed on Highway 62, but that was after it was mostly uh, completed, but it was, you couldn't get them to do anything about it. And there was one developer in town that told me later that he got really upset with me. Uh, they were going to, if my memory serves me right, they were going to take money from the highway fund for something at Crater Lake, and 
I gave a, a speech before the, I think it was the Highway Commission, that to make people drive through an obstacle course and put their lives in danger to get to Crater Lake, let's make it accessible and safe for people to go to Crater Lake. That, that was one of my arguments at the time. And a developer in town told me later, he said, I thought you were so wrong. Uh, I mean, we're talking a small-time developer, uh, that nobody was going to want to move Diggle Point with everything you were saying about the safety of the highway. And, and it's, now I see you were right. That meant a lot to me. Uh, but it was blazing a lot of things that just really hadn't been blazed. The mayor of Eagle Point, uh, Shirley, or Donna Butino was the first one, even though I totally didn't agree with her about biomass, but she was the first one that stepped outside of Eagle Point and started voicing her opinion about something and and she was passionate about it, and uh, I respect her for... That probably set an example, even though I disagreed with the subject of set an example for me that you couldn't be mayor and not be involved outside the city limits, whether it was at the state legislature or the high transportation department or the Rogue Valley Council of Governments. And there wasn't a, a mayor's association at all at the time. I kind of put that together. And and we all did it. I think we all did. I know I did. Uh, the mayor's hosted at a meeting. It might be a lunch or something. I'm pretty sure that uh, some of them in their city paid for it. But I hosted it. I paid for it. I wrote up four thousand dollars one year just in tax deductions for things that I had done, and there was no pay for the council. So I, I think at that time the water bill was like about basic bill was like about fifteen dollars a month, and you got your water bill paid. That was the only compensation that there was for being mayor or council. And I was good with that. I paid all my expenses when I went to Salem to anything for anything that I did. I, I paid my own expenses. It wasn't as expensive as it is now or I wouldn't be able to. But uh, I felt like it's, you shouldn't be serving. The word is service. That if you're not willing to give, and maybe sacrifice a little bit to serve, that's not really service to me. I, and I felt like that's the way it should be at, at the time. And I was doing a lot of things that nobody in the past had really done that I should be willing to. Uh, and I could eat at McDonald's and drive my car to Salem and, you know, uh, when I became involved with the Rogue Valley Council of Governments. I went to the League of Cities conference twice that Rogue Valley Council of Governments paid for, uh, and that was in Washington, D.C., which was an incredible experience for me to get to do. Was, and I was pretty active in it at the time. Were you the only woman? <clears throat> Were there many women? In, in the government? Valley Council of Governments? Any of it? State level? Oh, uh, state level, <laughs> yeah. There there were some. Uh, Rogue Valley Council of Governments, I'm trying, I'm thinking I was kind of, because it was basically made up of the cities in, in the county that belonged to Rogue Valley Council of Governments. Uh, I was a really strong pusher and advocate for following public meeting law and for educating yourself 
about public meeting laws and they're pretty simple and they're pretty straightforward and the laws about executive sessions and what can be discussed in executive sessions and uh, those kind of things are what makes integrity in the organization complete, completely and I was a real sticker about it and when I saw that public meeting law after I was mayor had been had been violated and and I knew it I went before the council and in my words from back then nailed them on it and uh, I'm proud of that more than more than specific things that I did I feel like I never sacrificed my integrity for anything. I was raised that way, and uh, that was something that was that was really important to me. And I, back in my time as mayor, and I don't know because I haven't been to a council meeting. I don't even know the people on the council. I knew Bob Russell and Leon when they were mayor, and I. I had good relationships with them and still do. I think I think that's the role of a leader to make everybody know that they're not going to sacrifice their integrity and most people will follow it. I mean if and they'll respect you for it, but I just think it's a really important precedent to set as a leader. I don't care if it's of the PTA or the Historic Society or what it is, uh, any government thing is there's public meeting laws that are, uh, and I think a lot of people aren't educated about, and then they get when there's, let's say, a, an argument. Uh, on philosophy or, or or whatever, I think that's what tends to get make people talk about things that needed to be discussed, that were discussed in a executive session, outside of an executive session, and those kind. I think those are habits that are formed because emphasis isn't put on, and it, education isn't. Uh, put on knowing what they are yeah. and stopping before you've messed up. Another thing, this is kind of off the subject, but, that I did uh, this, the Jackson County am I trying, administrator, and I can't think of his name right now, and he was administrator for a long time. I had a good rapport with him and when I was very first mayor I went in there to talk to him about something and he said you know something that I've always done that and people really liked him this was when he first came here that something that I've always done is I've always kept a journal during the week of what I did, who I saw, who I, and turned it in to the, well, the county commissioners at the next meeting of what I had been doing in between. And I thought that was the best idea ever. And I did that from then on. I used to have all the minutes of all the meetings and all of the, you know, my, uh, what I had done during that two weeks and, and sometimes it was just little funny things but sometimes it was things that never came up in the meeting that I had had done or discussed with somebody or whatever that uh, wasn't anything that I couldn't discuss, but you wouldn't have discussed it because you were at the meeting doing business of the day right then. And I don't know whether anybody has ever done it since, but I think it built a rapport, and I and I think it 
made them see that I thought as a job and I, you know, I yeah. was working yeah. at it. You know, I, I haven't seen a lot that has bothered me since mm. my time. I'll a little bit, but uh, I, I'd like to get positive to where we are now in comparison to where we were then. And, oh. and, I, and I don't think the answer is, and I, this was a hard lesson for me to learn, that everything's important while you're mayor. Once you're no longer mayor, it takes about 20 minutes for everybody to, to forget the things that were super important to you. And, and that is not, uh, I think some of them stayed and, it, well, they have, like the decorations and things have, have moved forward. But uh, it and it is time for new ideas. But but I really think you have to give credit that it's not about you. It's about the ideas that move on and the traditions you've started from your ideas. Other than that, it's probably going to go in another direction and probably needs to. It's not, uh, and, and those are things that I didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew I cared a whole bunch, that I loved this town, that I loved what the people had done for me when I was in need, and uh, that I, uh, and that I did the best I knew how to do at the time.